Hello world, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be putting together the offline speech recognition library called VOSC and the Python text-to-speech library together and we're going to make a very simple chatbot using our Raspberry Pi 4 and so um, I'm really sorry for this weird setup but when um, I updated my Raspberry Pi the remote desktop connection um, is really slow and so I just wanted to show you a smoother operation and so let me show you how it works and then we'll dive into the code so I'm going to press run so I got my Raspberry Pi hello hello say something please subscribe to my channel do something I don't understand that yet all right, so three simple commands. When I said hello, it said hello. When I said say something, I hard coded it to say, please subscribe to my channel. And then when I said do something, it says I can't do that yet. So I'm not a big fan of that kind of robotic Australian voice, but I think there's a way to make it better. And so now we'll um, I'll put the camera set up as normal and we'll go through the code. But first, welcome to the 185th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, like this video and leave a comment if uh, you're working on something similar. All right, thanks. Okay, we're back to our normal setup now and I am going to remote desktop connection into my Raspberry Pi and then, then I will show you the code that we use to just do what, uh, to use the offline library VOSC, the offline speech recognition library, and the Python text to speech to make your own little Alexa or Siri or chatbot or digital assistant or whatever you're doing. So if you've tried to log in using Pi and you just get this blue screen, um, try to watch here on my short and I talk about how to fix that. But basically, you have to create a new user because it will no longer let you uh, log under, do a remote desktop connection using Pi, the, that username and that root. And because of this, you have to log back in as Pi because the user I created is a root user. Okay, next we're going to open up Thani, our Python IDE. Okay, so once you're in Thani, um, what you're going to do is, and before you do that, um, importing VOSC is just the same as we did in this video. So you will need to pip install VOSC. Um, and once you do that, so from VOSC, import model with a capital M, and then Calid rec Caldi Recognizer, capital K, capital R. And then you also need to pip install Pi Audio and PYTTSX3, that's Python text-to-speech. And you can watch how to do that by clicking on the video here. But please make sure you watch that video because you have to pip install another library. Um, it's called eSpeak and uh, you, you have to do that before Python text-to-speech will work. Next, we're going to have to download the VOSC model just like we did in um, my initial setup video. So um, go ahead and open up a Chromium tab and then type in uh, VOSC model download all right so we have this VOS, VOSC models by uh, alpha c5 so click on that and then uh, assuming you're an English speaker just go ahead and click on this and download it this VOSC model small en us 15 
All right, and then once it's downloaded, I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to download again. Now, I downloaded it into my download folder, so I just clicked on it and downloaded it straight to downloads. And once you do that, you can uh, open it from that little bar or go to whatever folder you um, saved it in. Mine is here, right? So home, this is the username and downloads. So what I recommend doing is highlighting this whole line copying it and the reason why is because the next thing you need to do is pass the absolute path of the model so model equals capital M model and then you put in an R and then copy what we just highlighted which is the thing and then put the file name without the extension okay so that's the model then the recognizer equals CalD recognizer which we imported here you're gonna pass it the model and then this 16,000 which I think is the frequency and this works on the laptop like I did in a previous video but it also works on this Raspberry Pi as well Next, we're going to establish our mic. So mic equals pi audio dot pi audio with a capital P and A, and then you call it. And then we're going to establish the engine that's going to listen. So engine equals PYTTSX3 dot initialize, so dot in it, and then call it. And then we're going to do this listening equals false, right? That way we can control it as this... Um, program gets more complicated um, we want to control if it's listening or not and so we're going to just start that um, variable now then um, this is exactly like the previous video on how to set it up so I'm just going to quickly go over it so we're going to do a function called get command and now we're going to set listening to true and then we're going to open up a stream. So stream equals mic dot open. The format equals pi audio dot pa capital I nt 16. Channels is just one. The rate is 16,000. Input equals true. The frames per buffer equals 8,192. Then we're going to start a while loop. So while listening, we're going to stream dot start underscore stream. And then we're going to do a try and accept. So we're going to try to get the data. So data equals stream dot read. And then we're going to pass this 4096. So if the recognizer dot accepts waves form, which is this data. So if that's true, the result equals recognizer dot result with a capital R and then call it and then the response we just want the response equals result and then we want it all the way up starting at the 14th character all the way to the negative third and the reason why is it puts each one in a dictionary so we go ahead and uh, split that dictionary up and we just want the string then we're going to stop listening so listening equals false stream dot close then we're going to return the response and then um, if you get an OS error we just want to pass right so if you get some sort of weird noise and the stream does not like it we're just going to pass we're not going to do anything with it right then we're going to start our official program so um, we're just going to say while true this is going to print waiting for command dot 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 and so if we put this into like a mask or a little cert, uh, Siri, um, you know, a, a little thing, then you're not going to see this waiting for command. This is just for my testing. And then we're going to say the command equals get command, which is the function we just established. 
And then, like any other chatbot or anything that uses hard coding like I've done in the past, uh, and you can watch a substantial digital assistant I've created by clicking here. And it's making your own Alexa or Siri. And it's one of my most popular videos on my channel. Um, so if the command equals nothing, right? Um, it's just listening. We're just going to pass, right? We're just going to keep looping and waiting for a command. But if, so L if command equals hello. And now you have to put these in lower cases. And we don't have to do that if we just um, go back up here and make sure and then put it as a lowercase from the start. Then we don't have to keep repeating ourselves. But I have yet to do that yet. So I just have these in lowercase. Um, if we wanted to discard the programming rule of do not repeat yourself. Uh, you could just put elif command dot lower, call it equals hello. That's fine too, um, but um, we didn't do that. So um, while true, it's waiting for a command. Command equals the get command function. If the command is nothing, we're going to pass. If, and you heard this in the beginning of the video, if I say hello, we're going to do engine dot say, and it's going to say hello. Um, and then engine dot run and wait, capital A and W. And what that does is it um, stops, or not stops the microphone, but it tells you that you have completed that string and now it's waiting again for the next um, text to speech. Um, then I said elif command equals equals say something. Then I said uh, engine dot say, please subscribe to my channel. And then engine dot run and wait. And then else, so everything else I haven't programmed yet, it says, I don't understand that yet. Engine dot run and wait. Um, now this is an infinite while loop, which is not good programming. And that's the end of the code. So you, you need a keyboard interrupt. Um, or what I recommend is a uh, sleep command. So, uh, so my digital assistant is going to be named Shane. So I'll say, Shane, uh, go to sleep. And then maybe I'll turn off the mic for a little bit or something, you know what I mean, and have a wake word. And I cover all of this in that digital assistant video. And so that's pretty much it. So this is, um, we're iterating through the steps, right? So we imported Vosk in a separate video. And then we imported Python text-to-speech. And now we're putting it into the Raspberry Pi. And then the next goal is to build these commands out more substantially. And then, I don't know, put it in some sort of toy Iron Man masks or something to test it out. And so that's the future. I hope you subscribe to my channel so you can watch me do that. Um, if you're wondering why I'm using an offline speech recognition versus the ubiquitous speech recognition library, then go ahead and watch this video where I control a drone with my voice. And the reason why is the drone I'm using, I have to connect to its own Wi-Fi. So I have to be offline. So that's why we're using Voss, the offline speech recognition library. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel and like it if you did. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.